What I discovered after shooting and uploading over 500 videos on YouTube. That's right. I'm in fact a little bit embarrassed to show you guys behind the scenes today of literally how more than I'd say 80% of these videos totally bombed. But why these videos played a crucial role in taking the channel to where it is today. By the end of this video, you're gonna realize all of the mistakes that I made so that you don't have to make them. And if you stay till the end for next and watch next five, 10 minutes, you're gonna discover why the mistakes I made is literally one of the most common mistakes YouTubers make so that you literally do not have to spend years in trial and error trying to figure things out on your own. If you're new to this channel, welcome to my channel. I talk about online marketing and uh, one of the things you'll realize is that in recent months, I think somehow the algorithm is starting to like this channel. So to give you a quick backstory of how things look like, in fact, this is from Social Blade, you'll see that here's something that I wish I knew. I'm gonna walk you through all the different things that I wish I knew starting out, but I didn't. And it's basically this, okay? I actually started my YouTube channel quite a while back. Take a look at this. This was in 2011. So it's close to a decade ago. Now, I didn't start uploading a decade ago, but I would say that I started uploading videos pretty consistently in 2015. Now, what I did back then, you'll notice that literally my growth was stagnant for a really long time. 150 subscribers, 99 subscribers, 250 subscribers. Okay, the first, what I wish I knew was, it's not one size fits all. I didn't know that because I was creating content on Facebook, all I would do then is I would take that video that's on Facebook and I'll just slap it up on YouTube, thinking that it's gonna do well because it kinda did well on Facebook. Now, I built my initial following on Facebook and that was my primary focus. And I took what I did on Facebook and I just did the same thing on YouTube. But I didn't realize that the mechanics and the context is different. If you are somebody that's creating content on YouTube and if you're creating content on Facebook or you're thinking one of the other, the first thing to understand is context. You see, what I didn't do back then was, what are people on Facebook doing? They're doing this, right? They're scrolling. Scrolling, 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 and they'll only stop if something gets their attention. If it's a scroll stopper, if it is a pattern interrupt, if there's a hook, which is basically the headline or the image or the call out that makes a person stop, that makes them go, huh? However, on YouTube is different. On YouTube, which I didn't realize back then, it is all about search and it's about intent. Why does a YouTube video get discovered? It is because a person is either two things. Number one, doing a search on Google and your YouTube video appears. And number two, it appears on the right-hand side as a suggested video. The same way how on the right-hand side as you're watching this YouTube video right now, there's a suggested video. How can you apply this? And I wish I knew this. It's such a simple tweak. If only there was some guru that said, Ping Jun, you need to just make this super simple tweak so that your videos on YouTube is not titled the same way on Facebook. So let me give you some examples. If I were to go to my YouTube channel and if I were to show you my really, Print really off. old YouTube videos and I don't even have to go that far back. Okay, I'm just gonna go back like three years and you will straight away see all of the mistakes that I make. Oh, take a look at this, okay? It's in fact not that long ago, a year, two years ago. Take a look at this. If you were to take a look at my videos back then, pretty sure there are a lot more older videos. I'm not sure why it's just going back a year, but you will see now this video here, which is now unlisted, says don't wait for inspiration, create it. Now if you think about this, how would this video ever get discovered? Now this might work on Facebook where there's the borders that says don't wait for inspiration, create it, that makes a person stop. But on YouTube, it doesn't even make sense. How would this video get discovered on the search engines or how would it appear on the right hand side? This video would be a lot better if it was optimized for, for example, on you know, how to stay motivated. There might be some search value to that. However, this is a great hook. This is not a great YouTube title. Second thing, what I wish I knew is that you'll notice that the videos that I created back then, because I was creating on Facebook, short videos tend to work on Facebook. On YouTube, this was one minute and 31 seconds. YouTube hates that. YouTube wants to to be able to serve ads. They want to get their audience to stay on YouTube for all eternity. 
So the way to do that, the way to monetize, the way they can serve ads is when they can have the pre-roll ads, if when they can have ads in between the videos so that that's when they make money. But for something that is 1 minute and 31 seconds, they can't monetize off that. If you take a look at this, like don't take advice from broke people. Yeah, that's a good Facebook pattern interrupt. It's not great for YouTube. Number two, I wish I knew that I needed to create longer form videos on YouTube. So write that down. Hopefully you're taking notes so that you don't have to go through the decade of trial and error of trying to figure things out on your own the same way I did. I truly learned it the hard way. More than 500 plus videos, but somehow I was stubborn enough to just keep going. I kept going, but I realized like something's not right. Like why is it doing so well on Facebook, but it's not doing on YouTube? And you know, I wasn't somehow, I didn't buy on any of these courses. I was just trying to figure things out on my own. So that's number two, right? Create the long videos that is tutorial based, just the same way how I'm doing this video right now. And you notice like this video over here is slightly different because it's a hook that is optimized with a keyword. Notice that my old videos, they're all short because they're all great for Facebook. But now on YouTube, what do I do now? They're all like 10, 12, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes long. Why? Because I'm trying to make the algorithm happy. I want people to stay watching the videos so that YouTube can keep people on the platform. And that brings us to number three. Number three, what I wish I knew, going back to my analytics, is you can see that my view count, as you can see, it's, it's only recent that things started taking off. And you can see like over here, I did not switch on monetization for a very, very long time. When I started switching off monetization, I always thought that by switching off monetization, because I don't need the money on YouTube, I just want to focus on growth, YouTube might show it to more people maybe because less people are watching the ads, therefore more people stay on the video. But what I realized and after speaking to many different people doing it is that it's, there's no black and white answer to this, but when you switch on monetization, there is more incentive for YouTube to start showing your videos to more people. Now there's no official report on this that confirms this, but after I started mon switching on monetization, which was a couple of months back, I feel that there is a difference because now YouTube is more incentivized to push your videos over somebody that doesn't have monetization switched on. So that's the third thing I wish I knew. I wish I knew that I started to switch on monetization earlier. I wish I knew that back then, thumbnails. Now, if you take a look at my older thumbnails, take a look at this. As you can see, man, I've not seen these videos in such a long time. Oh wow, I'm actually seeing this the first time with you guys in a while, okay. Now I have no idea what this video is from eight years ago with that has four views over here, but I can bet you it's pretty damn cringy. What I wish I knew is that YouTube is not a place to just document random things that I'm doing in life. Somehow, eight years ago, I was in the casino, but I recorded myself winning 150,000 credits. It's not $150,000, okay, credits from the Wizard of Oz slot machine. What I wish I knew is, I wish I had a theme. Make sure your channel follows like a specific theme. Notice, it wasn't optimized, like what is introduction? Why would it ever get like, why, you know, why would YouTube ever push this? Take, take a look, I would be uploading like testimonials. Why would people be interested in testimonials, right? It's not a searchable thing. Now the only reason why it has got 2,000 views is because it was embedded on a website. So. Don't misunderstand and say, oh wait, wait a second, it was 5,000 views, that did pretty well. No, it's because this is embedded on a website and that's where the views came from. However, you will notice that, take a look at this, there's like no theme to it, like that my Diablo 3 videos that's now unlisted. So what you want is, you want to be able to follow a theme. Take a look at this, this is one of my biggest mistakes. Now, you remember seeing this drop over here in views? minus 600,000 views in July 2019. The reason for that is because I had to unlist this CrossFit video that I shot in 2012, and somehow YouTube thought that my channel was like a CrossFit channel. So it was confusing the algorithm. And again, you can see all the mistakes that I did. I, I sent to my friend Alex Mendoza a proposal, and I even uploaded this proposal on YouTube to send it to him. There was no theme to it. Most importantly, number five, is that there was no thumbnail. So notice I had all these different testimonials from different people, videos of me doing a CrossFit workout, 
insane, okay? I don't even wanna watch this, these videos over here. Notice that I didn't even put in thumbnails and that's number five, okay? Look, all these videos, they didn't have thumbnails, they didn't follow a theme, they weren't searchable, they weren't keyword rich. They were all just random testimonials. Take a look at this, like video 21013071418140, like, right? It's, it shouldn't even be long here. Okay, and that's why all these are now unlisted in private. Take a look at that, that's me half naked over there, drinking chicken breast. Uh, blended chicken breast. So you'll notice that I literally made all these mistakes for years. For years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And years. Mistake number six I, that I wish I knew, okay, I probably lost count now, is I would upload these member videos on my YouTube channel. YouTube channels should only be used for videos that has got searchability on the search engines. Not for testimonials, not for members area videos, Okay, only for videos that actually drive. Take a look at this, there was something that I did right. Take a look at that, four years ago, 18 techniques to dominate Periscope. So Periscope was like the platform before Facebook Live came about. So I literally did Periscope videos and because it was keyword rich, notice there was 1,700 views over here. I will upload these private videos for my team. Again, all the mistakes. If you don't have a thumbnail, YouTube is gonna randomly generate one where your eyes is gonna be like half closed, just like this one, and you don't want that. So all these junk, they're all here, which you know we'll probably need to clean up one day, okay? But they're all mainly unlisted. And by the way, you can still see here, right? Commitment is just two things. It's that's just a hook. It doesn't have searchability. It wasn't until I'd say two years ago when I started putting in thumbnails. Take a look at this. No searchability, just do it, take action. This is not a Nike ad. So just these five things alone, I'm just gonna summarize. If you avoid these things and you started doing it, number one, now not, not in the right order because I can't remember what the order is, but searchability. Make sure your titles is optimized for search based on what people are searching for, based on discovery, based on intent. Now some of you could be saying, well that's not true. PewDiePie and Casey Neistat doesn't shoot videos like that. That's true. Today, any one of them could shoot a video that says me counting to from one to 100,000 and it could have a million views. In fact, that's a real video from you know, Mr. Beast. When you reach a following, you could do whatever it is you want. However, if you're starting out with zero following, 100 people, 1,000 people, start with searchable videos. Number two, have a theme. Don't start creating random videos about everything, about slot machines and CrossFit and your personal life. Stick to one specific thing. Number three, create longer videos. Make sure that you're serving the algorithm because that's how they make money. Turn on monetization. And number five, make sure that your videos are actually videos that is for traffic and not for like the members area, not for testimonials or for general storage. These are just some of the many things that I wish I knew when I was starting out, but I know that just by applying these things in your video, YouTube videos right now, it is going to significantly help you get traction the same way it did for me in the recent months. Let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is, what it is that you feel resonated most of you, and as always, smash the like button if it helped you out. It does help out the channel a little bit, and make sure you subscribe, press the bell notification button for future videos like this one. This is Ping Jun here, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video.